everybody. Welcome to the weekend. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Counting down to the weekend. And welcome to another episode of A Blind Guy. His wife. Their Life Live. Here on this channel, we explore entertainment, career choices, and health and wellness, all while introducing you to fabulous people from our personal and professional network. We do this every Wednesday. Thursday and Friday from 11.15 to 11.45. Eastern Standard Eastern. Time, so we can count you guys down to Friday. So we're ready to have fun with you today. But before we begin, I want to just let you know that this broadcast is made possible by member support from viewers like you. Viewers like you. So guys, we appreciate you. You have been amazing. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you will see www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash blind guys wipe their life. I was an announcer in my former life, I think, Corey. <laughs> and so you can always make you can always make a one-time donation there, and it's uh, it goes to our Austin Pine Entertainment Incorporated parent company, which is a five hundred one c three nonprofit. Yes, so we do have a five hundred one c three nonprofit Austin Pine Entertainment. That means, guys, if you go to our blind guy, his wife. Uh, their life buy me a coffee page you'll see Corey and I right at the top you can scroll around and you can buy us cups of coffee you can buy us one cup you can choose three cups you can choose five cups and your tally is right there or you can type in your own number so since the five is there Corey I'll add zero zero you can buy us 500 cups of coffee and support uh, this production with 2500 oh that'd be nice um, actually Corey it looks like I can click this uh, but 100% 100% of proceeds do go to Atun Pond Edutainment Inc. So we really appreciate you guys uh, showing, you know what, Corey, the thing didn't even share. I was just talking my heart out. Oh my goodness. You know what? Technical difficulties, guys. This is why we need you to buy us a coffee. <laughs> if you can see it now, hey, look at it. Click on it. Type it in. Buy us some coffees. You know what to do. This is member-supported uh, production from viewers like you. We even we even have a gift for you right there. If you're watching on the replay, you know, like if you are watching um, Blind Guy, His Wife, Their Life live on the replay, definitely leave us a comment, like this video, share it with someone else. Because, you know, we've got great stuff. What's up for today, Corey? Now, as you come in, don't forget to hit that like button. And then if you don't not subscribe, please subscribe. And it's because we always have some special guests today. Today is no exception. We're going to bring them in to say hello to you before we get started. So we're going to say hi to our word on the street guest. Yes. We're going to bring her in. Our word on the street guest is just going to come in, wave and say hello. Her name is Carter Rose. Hey there. Hi. So we are excited to have you. We'll see you in a few moments. OK. OK. All right, thank you. And we have a special guest that's going to teach you how to fund your fund. She's going to share some tips on creative ways for you to have world travel experiences like her with business opportunities and work opportunities. She is none other than Andrea M., or we call her Anja Africa. <laughs> Let's say hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. Good morning. We are so excited to have you here because you can travel on a dime, like $100 going all the way to Spain and back, and you got paid while being there. We're going to find out more later, right? Yes. All right. We are excited. See you soon. <laughs> of course, we're going to share some of our plant-based treats that we enjoyed this past Sunday, even though I didn't enjoy the fact that Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl. Ooh. Ha ha. Well, you know, we always finish our program with a plant-based treat. So at the end of this 30 minutes, you are going to see Super Bowl sweets. Get these orange. All right. That's all we can give you guys. Just a sneak peek. But, you know, Corey, everybody's chiming in this morning. Since you can't see, I'll read the comments oh, to you. All right. Uh, people always say Corey's blind and they, they don't realize he can't see. Yes, his eyes don't work. But guess who's super excited for today's guest, Corey? One love, family, XDMC. X XDMC. <laughs> we also have Philip Aldo Jr. saying good morning, all. PWJ, you let XDMC beat you again. Look, he got in a little bit, a little bit earlier, huh? We also have the God in me, thirty-one, saying Happy African Day to Queens and 
kings and queens in the chat. Well, happy African Day to you, too. So happy to have you here. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Hey, Kai Henry. She says, good morning, everyone. Kai Henry in the house. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she recently was on our Word on the Street. So thanks for coming back. And her mother gave some chiropractic tips on how to keep your neck and spine in good health while you're doing all this zooming around and online work. So go back and check out the replay on our YouTube channel. Yes, when her mom was there, uh, Clarence says, good morning, everyone. Oh, he says, good morning, family, because, you know, that's family. All up. right, Clarence. Hey there, Milton. Good morning to you. Milton Craft in the house. Man on a business mission. Show us some business tips. All right. Milton is a businessman. His channel is great. Make sure you head over there. Check him out. Hey there, Jahari. She says, good morning, kings and queens. Much love. <laughs> Jahari, make sure those boys keep playing basketball. Uh, that was my layup cord, but I think my uh, flick of the wrist was off of the screen. Okay. <laughs> my thoughts on everything says we are subscribed. How are you both doing today? Thank you for uh, the subscription. Yeah, my thoughts on everything. Make sure you guys hit that like button on everything. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy to hear that you are headed back to Ghana very soon. We'll keep everybody posted on our travel plans as well. Hey there, Kanik Mighty New just says, oh, hi, sweetie. She saw Rosie and was just, oh, like she loves babies. We all do. Kanik the Mighty New John, she going to say you hit the like <laughs> button or else she bring more fire. <laughs> yeah, so everybody's talking to each other in the chat, Corey, but you know who's here. Fan Britt says, good morning, fam. Fan Britt in the house, probably on her 92nd cup of coffee this morning. Oh, yeah, I haven't had my cup yet, just. You know, we're on the way to that next. But I see you have yours. Yep. So everybody's chatting it up, Corey. I say we get on in here because our kids are saying, hey, y'all, let's get our word on the street popping. Today we have a young genius in the house for our word on the street. It's time for today's word on the street with Carter Rose. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Rosie. Carter Rose, what is today's word on the street that you have for us? A quaba, and that means you're welcome to my space or you're welcome. Oh, in the tree language of Ghana, West Africa. So it means you're welcome to my space. So if somebody's coming to your house, you say a quaba. Or if they give you something, or you give them something, they say something back, then you can actually say you're welcome by saying a quaba. Can you show us how that works? Yes. So just like this, if I have my bottle of water, mm -hmm. I'll give it to mommy. Thank you. And she will say thank you. And then I will say a quaba. So that's another way for saying you're welcome. All right. Well, Madase Pa, or thank you very much for bringing us the word on the street, a quaba. And what do you say back? A quaba. A quaba. Now, you told me earlier today that something exciting happened to you on February 1st. What was it? It was that I lost my tooth and I got a visit from the tooth fairy for my first time. Oh, Your first time oh and, congratulations. And what, how much money did you get for that tooth? I got one dollar because I lost my first tooth. And if I lose the second one, she's going to give me two. Well, I'll have to tell the story one day on my ch on this channel about the Tooth Fairy's uh, inflation where the Tooth Fairy left one of our children a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> so yeah, so our children's teeth got a little expensive there. For well, me. we <laughs> want you to know that everybody's saying hello. So our kids are saying hi, Carter Rose, hi. and yes, and we have uh, Jahari saying hi, Princess. Hi. <laughs> Milton is also saying, great job, little one. And that goes for you and your brother. I see him back there helping out. Uh, you know, Jahari says, oh, this is cute. Uh, also, Kanique Mighty Nugent, she's saying, oh, looking at everybody helping out with the production this morning, your mom, your brother. It's a family affair. You guys are marvelous. So thank you so much for helping us this morning because Karen Pino also says, hi, good morning. <laughs> So you have been, you have done such a great job. And Kelly Watt says you are so cute. They just can't get enough of you. We will. Oh, see, she's using her words. Yes, Aquaba, that's the right word to say. So thank you again. And we will have to have you back. Will you come back on the show another day for us? Yes, I'll always come. Oh, uh, well, I say Bob. Yes, your genie says, hey, that's my Rosie. Great job, baby. Genie loves you. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, 
So thank you, Rosie. Hi, Little Miss Rosie is what Karen's saying. So we thank you so much for being here. And we will see you and your brothers and your mommy next time, OK? OK. All right. Yes, Rosie. Yes. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Well, that was really, really cute. She did a very good job. Oh, my goodness, yes. Rosie is like a little grown person. You know what I mean? She is ready to go. And, I mean, we have folks here saying uh, good morning. Like Kelly Watts, she says it's her first time here. She's new to our channel. So All right. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Yes. Kelly Watts, welcome. Welcome. Uh, Aquaba, Kelly, as Philip Waldo Jr. saying welcome, Kelly. Aquaba and XDMC notice that absolutely that's a new plaque in the back. We got a platinum record. Let me tell you something. Uh, this has been in the other room. And we said, let's move this to the studio. That's actually for our safari CD. So, you know, normally it's just hanging out in the plants. But for today, um, you know, forevermore, we figured let's make sure we put the plaque on the wall because, you know, that's how we roll. And like Bill Waldo Jr. says, we are rocking that platinum. You know, that's just how that's just how it all works, as Kanique Mighty Nugent would say. <laughs> How it all works with Kurt Nugent and Kanika the Mighty Nugent. So yes, why are you trying to say it so it sounded like you said how it all twerks? Like you said how it all works. Like you try to run it together. I heard you. Corey, well, we got a guest. I'm gonna tell this real quick, then we're gonna jump to the guest. So for any if you have kids around and still be too very you might want to put this you put it on mute. But what happened was <laughs> one of my children lost their teeth. Daddy went to his wallet to get out a um a one dollar bill to give them for the two. And it was Christiana. She jumped up. She said, Daddy, guess what? The two family gave me $20. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay. So fortunately, at that time, she wasn't keeping up with money denominations. So I switched out for a $2 bill and got the 20 back. <laughs> mm -hmm. So never be a two fairy if you're blind. All right. So Corey, um, everybody is still giving Rosie some love, saying, The God in me says, Thank you, Rosie. Um, of course, Kanika is laughing like, ha ha, not twerks, how it all works. <laughs> That's the channel. So uh, the plant is amazing. We love you, plant. No, you don't. These kids never water the plants. You know what? <laughs> Those are our kids. We got to get to our guests yes, because we, we have a special because, guest. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly Watts is here because of her. So oh, welcome, hi. Kelly. She's she was she's telling too much, though. She said this is my sister from college over 30 years ago. You know, we were trying to say that. Uh, no, Andrea, she meant that. She meant that since they're thirty now. Oh, you know, yeah. Okay, good, good, she, good. Yeah, good. I'm, I'm helping out then. So, all right, yeah, Jahari, I'm with you. Let's just laugh it off. <laughs> well, that being said, today we're going to show you. We have a special guest that's going to show you how to fund your fun. Mm -hmm. She's a world traveler and she's an online uh, business expert. She helps. She's and she's found creative ways to get herself to travel around the world. She's none other than Miss Andrea M. So it's time to travel the world with Andrea Africa. It's time for today's special guest. Hello, family. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, we've got your information scrolling at the bottom now so that people can follow you because you are the lady with the plan. You know, earlier I said that you went to Spain round trip on a hundred dollars. Um, you know, and that was back in the day when you could sign up as a courier. You could register as a courier, forego your bag, your luggage space, only take your carry on, and that way, you know, they could use your luggage space for other things. So you got a free trip and since back then you were a loctician, she still does hair, Corey, mm -hmm. you were able to make money while on the trip from some of the celebrity basketball stars that were there. So we, we got to jump right in because you've been around the world. Like, uh, don't sing, Corey, because I know what you're about to say. I'm Jen Africa. <laughs> I love that I have my own theme song. <laughs> right. You have your own theme song. And, you know, everybody here is welcoming you to uh, to the channel. Edwin Nilante Thompson is saying hello, family. And Karen heard you earlier, Corey. She said, I heard him, too. Uh, Kai was laughing earlier at all your jokes, mm -hmm. but everybody loves you here because, you know, Jahari is, uh, you know, giving you welcomes and all of that stuff. And when we mentioned that hundred dollars round trip to Spain, uh, you know, our kids are like, hey, that's dope. Belanta Queen says, Corey, I need a fly theme song like her. Guys, y'all work on it. <laughs> 
So let's jump right in. Belanta Queen to be. You know what? <laughs> As I was saying, puzzles of perfection. Okay, so uh, let's let's start from the beginning, way back in the day. You used to be a track star, right? Yes, I ran track in uh, middle school and high school. I ran no. for um, my high school, but I also ran for private clubs. And how how'd you parlay that as an adult into a way to yeah, find because, your fun? Because I have her here as a model, Corey. So she was a model. She was a track <laughs> star. She's been making money. So right. you made money as a model. You made money as, well, after you ran track in order to give back to the community, you yeah. also make money. So so tell us a little bit about this modeling uh, life and, you know, how that all came about. Okay. Um, as far as track goes, I just remember someone telling me that I had really long legs and a short torso, so I should put my legs to use, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I was like, okay, I'll try it, you know? Uh, so I started running track in uh, for a club. And then mm -hmm. they sort of got me trained to run more professionally with the uh, high school scholastic mm -hmm. arena, if you will. And then we traveled. Um, during that time, I went to, I ran pen relays in Philadelphia. I ran in Baltimore. I ran in Nebraska. Um, I think we had a track meet in Michigan. So that probably was really my first time kind of moving around nationally, but I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on around me. I do running up this, I remember running up the same stairs as Rocky at one of our <laughs> track meets, you know, yeah. so my, my coach would take us to places like that. Um, and so it started there. And then from there, everyone was like, well, you have to go to a high school that has a great track team. And that's how I ended up at Brooklyn Tech. We were city champions for 10 years straight, the girls mm -hmm. track team. Um, then from Brooklyn Tech, I was supposed to go to, uh, have a running scholarship, a track scholarship for college, but I decided at that point that I didn't want to run anymore. I didn't want to be committed uh, in college to running for my scholarship. Um, so I stopped running, but people who knew me were like, you know, you have to give back. You have to keep working with the young people. Do you know you can become a track official? And I was like, I never really thought about it. So I hooked up with a group, um, I think it was called Finish Links. And what we did was we were the people who set up the all the wiring and the cameras and the timers so that when people ran across the line, you got the speed to the millisecond, you know? I also sat there with the old school time, you know, the old school watch. <laughs> and click right. the button when people crossed the line, you know? Yes. So I did that as well and it paid well. And they would call me every weekend and sometimes they would call me for more exclusive um, track meets. So we got to travel a little bit with that as well. We'd end up in Jersey, Connecticut, you know, all over the East Coast. So it was cool. So wait a minute, you say it paid well, but yes. um, you know, for people that are living in today's times, we need some numbers because- for Oh, sure. Example, it I, depends. I know, yeah, I it depends. The, I'm asking because right now the minimum wage, you remember there was a big thing about the minimum wage coming up to $15. And you were saying you on average were paid $15 to $17 at the yeah, time? 15, actually, depending on the track meet, um, if it was a Catholic school track meet or a public school track meet or a private event that was funded, um, it could range from $15 to $20 dollars an hour and right. actually, now mind you i remember when minimum wage was three dollars and 35 cents okay wow. when i was yes. a kid minimum wage that. was dollars and 35 cents i remember so, yeah yeah so um working there it was like a big deal because i would work and you would work from like eight in the morning to eight at night it so was a you very full day like 12 hour shift at those yeah. rates you know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't do that in a factory. Like nowadays people are working Amazon and they advertise 20 to $25 an hour. Just know, yeah. I know from experience, I've delivered those packages, uh, slinging packages for Amazon is always fun. But, um, you know, we have XDMC just, you know, giving you all kinds of compliments. He says, look at my sister, the hat. The lipstick, necklace, all matching. Well, Joke. you know, listen, I had to do it for my people. I wasn't right. going to say, I said, I'll give y'all a hat today because I got to run, take some packages to the post office as soon as we're done. 
But uh, yeah. I, I will put on lipstick for y'all and dress up a little bit because, you know, yeah. I don't get to do this. I have to wear a mask all the time now. So Right. Yeah, and you don't need lipstick because our, our kids love it. Um, and, of course, Anja is saying, I mean, uh, XDMC is saying, yes, give us all the tea. So we really yeah. appreciate the numbers. Uh, Philip Waldo Jr. is welcoming you. And you know, Jahari also is is looking at that the, that style. XDMC remembers a three thirty five for sure. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of style, you were also a model. That's another way you found a creative way to fund your fun or to fund your Yeah. Style. I so always wore um, you know, cultural clothing. Um, long before people thought it was in style, I just mm -hmm. loved the bright colors, the bright fabrics. And um, someone approached me on the street in Brooklyn once at one of the art festivals and asked me if I would think about modeling. And I was, you know, I was like, yeah, OK, watch me get there. And they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, you know. But I got there. It was at a local school and um, it, it was it was legit. And we actually ended up taking modeling classes and getting a certificate at the end of the training. And then we did the modeling on local television uh, stations for Kwanzaa, different art centers. We did wedding shows and stuff like that. So it was cool. Now, you this picture, this, yeah, I have that picture right. of Corey when you were in Amsterdam yeah. modeling, right? Yeah, um, I, I don't have anything in my hand. I'm just posing. Right. But right. I, am at, I, I am in Amsterdam. Um, I was in Germany first, and then I went. I traveled to Amsterdam um, because it was like maybe a half hour to an hour train ride. So it was like we have to go. We just went for the day, um, and that particular place, of course, made brownies and space cakes. And as soon as you open the door, the smoke hits you in the face, you know. That's the reason um, so, why Corey, she says she doesn't have anything in her mouth because her hand is to her mouth as those, you know, she has some <laughs> token going on or something. But anyway, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> and you, you speak of, you speak of, you know, uh, being physically fit. I see you here when you were in Jamaica, you traveled there a lot of times, but tell us about earning money with fitness because you've done that and, and it shows. Yeah, I was training. Um, well, I'm a, I'm certified uh, certified trainer with LA Fitness, mm -hmm. um, and I taught kickboxing, body sculpting, and cycling. Cycling was my favorite class because I would always play calypso music, <laughs> so right. I had folks moving faster than usual. So that was absolutely. A class. Um, but even when I was in New York, I did some fitness training. I would go to Washington Heights in New York. Um, and I would train the children that were dealing with obesity, just teaching them how to be more flexible and take care of their bodies. Um, so that's what I was doing at the time. I don't right. know that my son realizes that I'm interviewing with you because he's walking up to me with his laptop. No, it's, you know what? It's okay because um, it, hey, it's a live stream and we can say things like, I enjoy that Amsterdam. Puff, puff, pass all day. So with your uh, modeling, your modeling took you to Germany, but then let's tell the story about Spain. So what I'll do is go ahead and listen to your son. I'm going to pull up a couple of pictures of when you were in Spain. So that way, if your son needs to tell you something or if you need to say something back, it's fine. And uh, Philip Waldo Jr. is definitely saying, remember to pass. So yeah, go away for a moment. We're going to share some pictures. We've had the pleasure of chatting with you. Uh, about some of these things. And so, guys, we want to show you one of the, uh, you said, where was she, Corey? Spain. Spain. Got it. Well, this is actually Hawaii. And so I'm going to show this full screen so that everybody can see that for just a moment. And we are going to take this puff, puff, pass off because Sonobia Corey says, greetings to my favorite family, mm -hmm. friends. Oh, and Super hey. no. <laughs> right, right, right. Super no is in the house. So you guys, when uh, Andrea, when Andrea went to Hawaii, she funded this trip by, um, what did she say, Corey? She, she went for a wedding. She, she took two weeks off from her job. job. Right, she was out. She and was. she saved for eight months. She had side hustles. She always had more than one job. Yeah, she said she's an excellent cook, so she was able to actually sell some of her food while she was working on her job because people loved her cooking. So she was actually selling uh, uh, quiches and other other items, uh, food items there for lunch. Because those greedy people would come over her shoulder. What you got today? What you got today? Because she loves to cook. Right. So guys, you can go around the world with whatever you have. That means that you know if you can cook, if you can eat. 
get it done. You know, make some money off of it. That's what she's done. Hey, Olivia, she says, good morning, my family. All right, good morning. So happy to have you here. And SG, glad that you could catch this live. We're so happy to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you here. And Andrea, Andrea has also funded some of her, uh, her travels by working the census and working the polls. So you know, before y'all take it the wrong way, it's P-O-L-L-S. Right. We're going to have her come back and talk about when she was in London because she lived there for six months. She met a Caribbean family that realized, hey, as black people, we've got to take care of each other. And so here she is on a park bench out there. And she was saying that those cobblestone streets are very rough on your shoes. So, guys, if you're traveling out of the country, make sure you get the shoes for the local place. And being from New York, she even shared this subway map showing that this is the subway map in Brighton. You could never show the subway map in New York City because on a postcard, on a postcard she could easily navigate this being from the city. So, you know, use what you have, guys, to do, you know, to do uh, whatever you can to travel around the world. And it's also about getting to know people in the places that you're in, because when she went to Germany to do her modeling, she actually met that person. They were a relative of uh, the mommy studio that she was working for. And he was like, you got to come to Germany. You got to come to Germany. And so oh, six yeah, weeks later, she, ended up in she went to Germany, went to Amsterdam to do modeling over there. And she ended up having a fabulous time there. So it's, it's all about, you know, <laughs> kind of finding creative ways to fund your fun. Corey Kelly Watson said, I'm learning some new things about my, my dear sister. Mm -hmm. We all said the same thing. Like, how do you go around the world? Um, on a on a dime, literally. And greetings to you, Jackie C. She says, greetings, everyone. So happy to have you here. And Philip Waldo Jr. is reminding you all to hit that like button and subscribe. And Kanique, if you're still here, I got a theme song for you. Come on without, come on within. You're going to see how it all works with Kanique Nugent. Oh, okay. I didn't know where that was going, Corey. Good news. We've got inside info. Kelly Watt says that was her sister's wedding in Hawaii, hey. and they had a blast. Mela Kaliki Maka. That's Merry Christmas. Never mind. Um, no. <laughs> Kanik says she is here. So you know who else is here, Corey, is Andrea. So we're going to bring her in so that way we can talk more about um, online sales, you know, yes, your, travels what, your, your travels to Africa, because currently uh, you taught me like you've done a Poshmark class on uh, on online sales using Poshmark, because that was one of the ways that you helped to not necessarily fund your trip to Africa, but supplement funding your trip to Africa. Back in the day, we didn't have online sales, but nowadays we do. And I know you use eBay, you use Poshmark. Guys, yes, if you're yes. looking to help fund her trip back to Africa, go there. Soul Springs by AM is how you can find her. Posh Ambassador, this is her page. This is what it looks like. Look at all the stuff for sale. You can shop by category. You can find anything you want, all the dimensions, all the details. She taught me this stuff in class, you guys, and I've actually made my sales as well. So, you know, we're all doing this. Tell us about uh, some of your travels to Africa recently because you've just come back from the Gambia, Sierra Leone, and Ghana. Yes. Um, I want to apologize. Amon had a quiz and I needed to help him. Apologies no, for no that. Problem. You know, family um, comes first. And so your son yeah. went to Africa with you. So tell us all about it. He did. He did. Um, so this year he turned 18, November uh, 15th, and he's graduating this year. So mm -hmm. my thing was um, I wanted to do something big with him and I'm already planning to move and he's not going to be coming with me, but mm -hmm. I felt like he needed to get his feet on the ground. Um, and so we, I planned the trip, and, but in order to pay for that trip, of course, um, you know, I took on an extra job because working for the state, I was working as a contractor and I was just able to cover my expenses and our necessities. I didn't want to interfere with that. So I took on a position working with the census for a month. And then I also worked with the polls and I used the money that I made there, which was a little, probably, I guess, about a little over 5,000 with the two combined. Now, when you um, say a little over 5,000 with the two combined, yeah. because the God of me is following this. He's like seeing the world on a budget. You know, while you were gone, we were yeah. showing them your Hawaii pictures. Kelly told us that that was her sister's wedding. And, you know, uh, yes. Clarence says that's their next trip. Thanks for sharing. 
So with with you doing the census and the polls, working the polls. G O L L S. <laughs> when and you say that was about five thousand dollars over about. Yeah. Uh, what time span did you raise that? Was that a month, two months, three months? Yeah, it months? was about a, it was about a month and a half because you know it's around election time, obviously. Mm -hmm. So for the polls, P O L L S, like Corey said, mm -hmm. otherwise yes. I probably would have had much more money, right? So yeah. nevertheless, <laughs> you know, so you gotta say that because that. Corey, yeah, you gotta Go say that because Corey was also giving out new um, theme songs. He gave one to Kanique. She liked you it. Okay. <laughs> The mighty new anyway, Giselle came in while you were gone. She's doing, we're all doing great, Giselle. So we okay, have good, good, good. Yeah, yeah you so haven't missed anything. Everybody is loving this. And welcome, Butterfly. Okay, like, good. Butterfly. Yeah, so I mean, us. I think the, the bigger picture is that when you see little opportunities, you don't necessarily have to commit full time. You know, you could just run and do something part time. I know oftentimes people are surprised when I work different places because they're like, you know, you don't talk like you're from here or, you know, right. you seem very educated. Why are you doing this? And I'm like, money is money. Okay? Money is green. Yes. That, that yes. is it. And, and I think you have to look past like whatever your credentials are when you're trying to accomplish things. When you need quick money, you just do quick, you know, you find something quick to do. And it just so happened. <laughs> Absolutely. When I applied for my last position, I had also applied for the census, but because Agent Orange kept postponing the census, mm. it ended up that it happened at a later date. And so when they called, I was like, well, if I can set my own hours, then absolutely I'm willing to do it. You know, and that's what I did. They called and I would work my regular job from eight to four thirty. And then from four thirty to nine thirty, I would work with the census. And then from nine thirty to like one in the morning, I was posting my stuff for my clothes online, you know, and responding to that. So you you have to kind of um spread yourself evenly, if you will, like, you know, right. get a time schedule down, decide how you can commit yourself and move from there. If it's really something you want to do, nothing else will stand in your way. You know, mm -hmm. you'll push past all the obstacles and you'll accomplish what you need to accomplish. So, um, so tell, us, tell us more about, um, I, I love that, by the way, um, you know, get it done. So how yes. did you get this done? Because I see a beachfront I see some four wheelers, but yeah. where are you in this picture? I'm, I'm actually, picture? you know, I'm, yeah, I'm behind the camera. I'm always behind the camera because my thing was, you know, I wanted him to experience these things. Right. And this actual, this quad ride they had where you could do a tour of their, their resort as well as the, the four wheelers. This is, in Gambia? Do, this is in Gambia and um, Sanyang is okay. the beach that we're on. And, um, or you could just do a beach tour. And I'm like, I don't need a tour of their resort. And to <laughs> ride for a half hour is $25. Wow. So, so why wouldn't I just do the beach ride and Amon can ride. I get to film him having a blast, you know, and they even went longer than the half hour. He was having so much fun. The young brother is from, I think it's called I forget the name of the uh, four wheeling company. I think it's Jatang or something like that. But um, they were the ones that scheduled it. The brother had just came from England. He's working with his dad and they own that company. So it's a black owned company that provides this. You can stay at the resort and do the bike tours or you can just ride on the beach. Nice. And then here, I know you have a, a friend here. She's a business owner and she was in yes. the Gambia in this picture. Yeah, she's in the Gambia in e at Eco Village. Uh, she took us to this place, which is a black owned beach resort. Um, it, and the brother has this space and all the rooms are named after famous African leaders. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And so I also have here now. this is one of my favorites because yes. this lady here is amazing. So tell us yes. a little bit about her. You're behind the camera. Tell us what yes. country you're, you're in right here. This is this is in the Gambia as well. And this is Mama Nasira uh, from Spicy Tasty Vegan Cuisine. So Mama Nasira and Dr. Joe have like three books on Amazon. Um, she has managed to heal herself through food. And she shares that with the world. She's also the sister responsible for giving the cure for COVID to the president of Rwanda. 
So that means that if we want to- Is it to Rwanda or Tanzania? One or Tanzania. the other. Tanzania. 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 So all we have to do is go to um, spicytastyvegan.com and we can get more information on this particular uh, lady and her husband. Dr. So Joe. That, doctor, yes. yes. So that when we, um, I'm going to pull up the, I'm going to pull up their page, Dr. Yes. Joe and uh, Mama Nasira, so that uh, their website, here it is, spicy, tasty, vegan cuisine, or just spicytastyvegan.com, basically. You'll right. see them there. Their books are there. So this way, if we want more information on how we can heal ourselves with food, it's right here. It's all right here. And you met the folks and, and you talked to them. You got your phone number. Y'all, I'm going to get her phone number too, but y'all won't. But this is <laughs> awesome. This is just amazing that yeah. you had the opportunity. You know, Jahari is saying she can't wait to do all of this stuff and just touch the soil. Uh, Giselle is saying nice. And she saw her on the interview with Blacksit. You know, our kids are saying, wow, because we're plant based and they're like, oh, OK, they, don't, they didn't realize so many people are plant based. And Milton definitely yeah. agrees that everything looks like a great experience. So I want to definitely um, touch on some of your other travels there, yeah. because I know that, you know, you were in all of these countries and you took a picture with somebody. You couldn't speak the language that he was speaking. He couldn't speak the language that you were speaking, but here you are, smiling, enjoying each other. Tell us about this. Well, you know, I just love chocolate men, so I, <laughs> I, I couldn't, I couldn't resist the opportunity. Um, this elder would all. There's a huge gate outside of the um, the guest house where I was staying, and everyone has to open country. that that gate in the Gambia at Bruford Estates. And mm -hmm. so this brother, he would always be sitting outside. And when he would see our cabs pull up, he would just get up from where he was sitting and, you know, open the huge gate. It has to be a 20 foot gate. So uh -huh. he would just open it all the time for us. And this one particular day I was going out and I happened to come outside to sit um, and I was waiting and I saw him and I said, you know, I greeted him. I said, good morning. And I asked him if he minds if I sat down next to him. And he said, no, you know, sit. And so we, I was going through my phone and he saw my pictures. So he leaned over and was looking at my pictures with me. And then he asked me to take a picture with him. And I said, absolutely. You know, so I took a picture on my phone first and then I took a picture with him on his phone. And nice. his name was uh, Elder Ernest. His name was Ernest. And nice. um, that, was, that was all. We really didn't talk much. We just smiled a lot. Right. Well, you know, XDMC is saying, can we see some more pictures? And Powell is definitely saying, he looks like my grandfather. It's real talk. And, you know, Giselle said the same thing. Looks like her granddaddy on her mom's side. So um, yeah. he, he would say shaky. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Philip Waldo Jr. earlier mentioned that you're a world traveler. And yes. um, I know here this is where you were at the limelight in London because you're from New York, they have a location there, but you were there um, in London when you were, so tell us, uh, um, when you were gone, we were showing them the London pictures saying how you need to, um, they need to get the right shoes when they're in London, because those cobblestone and stone streets will tear them up. And yeah, then, the UK, UK folks can confirm that those, those streets are rough. Right, and yeah. we were explaining to them how the subway was easy for you being from New York City, you know, you're used to a subway way more massive. So tell us a little bit about how you funded your trip to London, your experience there. How did you get there? Did you work to get there? I know you always had extra jobs. So tell us a little bit about I did. that. Um, but, you know, at this time, this was college. So we're talking like 1989. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was study abroad. So I took advantage of the study abroad program. Um, and I did work. I had college work study and I worked outside of the college. Like all my friends will tell you, I always had food. I always had groceries. I was feeding everybody in my dorm. We would cook together, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. So when they offered to study abroad opportunity, I was like, you know, I want to go. It was 1989 and I couldn't resist it, you know. So I went and everyone was like, well, people don't usually go their, la their senior year. I'm like, yeah, but this is when I have the money to go. I right. want to go. And they were able to allow me to um, take my credits from, you know, England and apply them to graduate because I was gone for that last 
you know, few months. Um, but it was an amazing time. I met some amazing people, um, you know, and as a student, you get a ton of discounts and sometimes even free tickets to plays. Right. So and I, that's the reason I, why you had all of these Cheap. Yeah, you said two, three, five dollars. Yeah, you yeah. can see the price. It says three pounds on one of the right. parties, and you know it, it was just amazing. And they would play old school music, and you know I don't know that I would have ever gotten to go to the limelight in New York because it would have been so expensive. There would be lines around the corner. Um, you know, I was always a house head. I love house music. So okay, when so I had the opportunity. No, no, let's what just happened? tell the truth. Let's just tell the truth about your experiences over there because Jahari says she used to rave with her family there. And, you know, this is how you ended up with your accommodations from a rave party, right? Yeah, I was walking down the street. <laughs> I was walking, I'm just staying in um, like a hostel, if you will, they call it H O S T E L. And yeah. it was just for students that traveled with us. And I was the only African in the building if you will right mm -hmm. um and i remember walking down the street in england and a group i was walking with some other females and some brothers drove by in the car and kind of hollered at us you know we were like hey you know we kept walking and the brother gets out the car he starts walking with me his name was terry mcmillan i will never forget his name right gets out the car he walks with me and he's convinced that i'm from the uk and i'm trying to tell him that i'm not from you know the states and um he invited me out to hang out and go to one of the parties i didn't make it to the party but i didn't make it to dinner at his family's house and they just adopted me after that his mom wow. just like you know i can't believe you're here alone we have a room for you if you don't want to be there with those people you come here you know <laughs> <laughs> and I would get up every morning and she would have like fried bakes for me, which is like a fried dumpling in the Caribbean. She'd have right. bakes and salt fish and, you know, all kind of goodies for me. And I never really saw her son, to be honest with you, because he he was um, throwing those rave parties, which I didn't know at the time were illegal. Mm -hmm. So they would put out like a secret code over the radio and everybody would know the meetup spots. So he would go do his thing. I would go do my thing. I had my own room. His room was at the top of the house. Right. So it wasn't like a romantic thing. You know, you were no. just, yeah. I you mean, he just... claims he liked me. I, I assume I wouldn't have been in his home, but <laughs> we really didn't have contact. You know, he. I would wake up and it would be money waiting for me to just go and explore. And every day I was at the British Museum. I, like I would sit for hours in front of paintings and I got it. Like I never understood why people did that before, but it's kind of like reading a book. Mm -hmm. Every time you see a painting, you see it differently. And you think about the era and the time and it just took you to another place. So yeah, it was quite amazing. I so, had a really good time. Got it. And so definitely Jahari is chiming in on the hostels. She's chiming in on, you know, how over there in the UK, because she's from there, they loved Americans, especially their melanated family. Kelly Watts is giving away all the details saying she could tear up a dance floor too. <laughs> like, I was agreeing, like, rave party, I miss them. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. so everybody's loving this. And, and it's not just, it sounds like traveling is not just about, you know, finding money, but it's also about finding people travel too because you went to you uh you got to you went to Jamaica because you and you were able to stay somewhere because you met somebody that, and you knew somebody yeah. there. Now here but you know you what's are. interesting? Mm -hmm. I just want to mention that um sure. it, it's so important to make connections wherever you go. You mm -hmm. have to connect like when I was in that hostel, like I said, I was the only African in the building. It was like 30 of us, right? right. So my thing was like, uh-uh, where are all the people of color? Like, where are the black folks? That's really where I was at. So I got on the train one day by myself. Like I said, I wasn't afraid to get on the train coming from New York. It's only like eight train. I'm like, how lost can I get? It's right. eight lines, you know? I went on the train, I rode to Brixton. And when I came out that train station and smelt the food and saw the markets, and I was like, oh, I can eat now because at that time it was mad cow disease in, in Europe. I don't know if y'all remember that. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, I remember. So no, I wasn't eating any meat and I definitely wasn't going to eat it over there. So all right. I was eating was spaghetti with butter and bagels because English food, 
Look, no hate to my UK people, but y'all know the food is nasty. So, no. <laughs> so I had to go to Brixton to get some Caribbean food to get some real food, soul food, right. if you will. And then I was able to kind of enjoy things and experience more because I was around people that I was connected to. Those connections are important. I got a picture of you here. Uh, I love to eat. <laughs> you are in, this is where you were in Spain. You had your lots. Yeah. You were able to pay the basketball player because he saw you had lots. But I want to yeah. go to yeah, this you, picture. You get paid by the basketball player. Oh, what I said? You said you didn't pay the basketball player. Well, no, you didn't pay him. Yeah, he <laughs> paid you. I want to go yeah. to this picture because here you are uh, doing hair in with the family that and this was recent this is recent you know i know the picture before that you were in germany right at, yeah, at, yeah. the stained glass windows but here this is recent you are in another country doing somebody's hair and the family made hair products and body products so you're using their hair products to show them how to manage their children's hair this is their oldest daughter so tell us a little bit about where you were and what yeah. you were doing here uh, this is in the Gambia in a village, actually. Um, I'm at the councilman's home and I was doing his daughter's hair because mom, uh, I'm going to assume it was mom, tried to put perm in the little girl's hair and it broke off her hair, but she still had a lot of new growth under the bottom. So I told mom, like, why are you trying to perm their hair? Don't do it. You know, I was like, it's going to break off. When they get older, they won't have any to work with. It will damage, you know, the, the, the um, hair shaft. And so I was explaining to her what it does. And then she was telling me that she makes body products. And I said, well, cool. Like, why aren't you using your products? And she started telling me what she puts in the products, cocoa butter, shea butter, uh, mango butter. And so I said to her, well, what do you use for hair? She said, I haven't. I said, but all of those products that you're putting in your body product, you mm -hmm. could be using on this baby's hair. She's like, I can't get the comb through it. I was like, you're not supposed to get the comb through it. Right. We, we were taught, you know, put a hard a comb in dry hair and wondering why the hair coming out and the child crying. Yep. You need to put some water. Water is life, right? Nourish yep. the hair like you would a plant. And I took her products and I just smoothed it on each piece of hair. And I did the little girl's hair, the whole head and Bantu knots. And mm. they were just shocked because it just changed her whole face. Isn't you know, it but, funny? People don't, yeah, and, and then people don't know what they have and what to do with it. And that's the whole point of you being here today. Use what you have, make it work, whether it turns into something financial, whether it turns into something beautiful. Because, you know, you've had an art gallery speaking um, beautiful. You know, Jahari is saying she needs you in Africa for her locks. And she also does admit that the English food is very bland, no flavor, but her family, they're Jamaican, so they're good on the spices. Um, you know, Powell was shouting out Brixton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they he said they hit a jungle party one time. Giselle definitely agrees. Connections are good to have. And I know that we will not be playing any of you and Kelly's house music video today because you didn't send them but xdmc wants to see those so you're gonna have to do that <laughs> so uh, i think she got her, her screen froze up a little bit i know they have snow out there so guys this has just been amazing because you know all of you are experiencing this right along with us and uh, Jahari Corey, she says those parties was on the ground. It was a part of the underground scene. They would travel then and have breakfast in the a.m. Mm -hmm. So they were out all night. You know what I mean? And Milton is like, sounds like good old Southern hospitality. He misses those days. And um, oh, power. Say it. Andre girl, gonna, uh, she, Andre girl, him left your movement money. Yes, he was feeling you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get my accent together. Andre guy, him left your movement money and yeah. <laughs> yeah so the, the guy that was at the home that hosted her uh guys this has been amazing I how just, is my translation on the patois uh can you <laughs> yeah yes definitely philip waldo jr says house music all night long power agrees that's a real example of us working together sharing cultural connections and um, Kelly Watt said, mm, those house music videos, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, definitely, guys, you know, when Andrea, when Andrea Africa or Andrea Martin went to Jamaica, they, she's been there four times. And she did share with us 
a place that we can still go visit today. So we definitely want to uh, share that with you before you go. I don't know if to believe this or not, Corey. XDMC says, I was a regular at Dance Interior Underground, Rooftop, and Studio 54. You know, yeah, this sounds like XDMC. Oh, okay. So it might be true. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's true. All right. You XDMC, know. you're doing that dance move where you hold your ankle and you pull your leg back and forth while you're <laughs> another leg, won't you? <laughs> so, guys, if you are ever in Jamaica, going to Jamaica, traveling to Jamaica, please be sure to visit Jackie's on the Reef. Um, Andrea swears by this place. She's been there over the years, um, quite a few times, four times uh, to and be the exact. From Louisiana. The owner is from Louisiana. Jackie's on the reef. She's an elder now, but she's been there for years. And the website is phenomenal. So you can see what you need there. Uh, you can click on the different links, all of the information. You know, sometimes you go places and the website doesn't give you what you need. You can't really figure out uh, the stay or how you book it. Everything is here. And it's a it's another holistic wellness place. So Jackie's on the reef.com. And she actually went, Andrea went to Jamaica. She made friends with the drummer, one of the drummers from the Lion King on Broadway musical. And mm -hmm. she uh, visited there. She said she stayed there at their home and they showed her around the island and she just went to all sorts of places that beyond the touristy spots that you typically go to, like the beaches. She was able to go to Dunn's River, and that's one tourist spot, but she was able to travel about the countryside, you know, seeing just regular life. Yes, um, so, you know, this and is... And seeing that everywhere, you know, we always get fed that narrative of that everywhere is poor in Jamaica and Africa, right. but she so actually this discovered is... places that show you something a lot different. Yeah, this is the real deal, everyday living, and um, and it's healing as well. And so we're going to be uh, wrapping up, but, you know, Jahari is definitely saying that Corey is pumping those beats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bring uh, Andrea back in to say goodbye to everyone because, you know, because of her, uh, Clarence says he might have to break out the hairstylist skills, make some money. <laughs> get it done, you know. Finally admitted to the world. Right, because he has a daughter, so he probably ran into him been doing her hair over the years, you know. And so this is this has been great, and they're all asking about um, the dances. They've been cutting up while you were gone. Powell said, XDMC, did you have on one of those funny suits in Studio 54? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up now, Powell. <laughs> yes. That sounds kind of weird, but okay. Right. And uh, well, you know, not, Powell, he says that he had the thriller jacket, so you not know. Now, XDMC had on MCM outfits, short sets, matching shirt, matching <laughs> shorts with the pull up socks. <laughs> While you were gone, Andrea, we did share uh, Jackie's on the Reef so everyone could see that website and know that, you know, you've been there. And uh, if you're, you're definitely a fan. And so Jahari mentioned to visit. Uh, Abu Akuda, African Village as well, is very nice. So when you go to Jamaica, hey, you got to do it. Giselle is saying, you've been holding back. I had no idea you traveled like that. And, you know, the, the nice thing is we want you to give us some final words on traveling and um, and traveling on a budget. When you went to Africa, you know, you I was watching your videos where you kept saying, um, I'm on a budget, you know, I'm on a budget. And some people, they don't know how to manage their money. So like you were here in, um, let me stop that one and add the other one. I'm going to show where you were in Sierra Leone. You know, you, you were there with different people that were, um, these people were like these two brothers right here. Mm -hmm. You can explain to us a little bit about them. Well, they are part of uh, Chief Bode's organization, One Fan Pool in Sierra Leone. And he organized a beach um, get together so that I could meet other diasporans that were there. Because it would be harder for me to try to travel to everyone's home mm -hmm. or them to travel to me. So you try to do things so that you're not spending a lot of money. Even when I would meet people and they say, oh, let's meet at this place. And I would meet them there. I get the menu and it's like 25 American dollars. I'm like, okay, which part of this didn't y'all get? I right. want a budget. So I will go to the local spot, get my food to eat, and then come back and meet them. But no one was taking me off that budget because my logic was when this money is gone, I'm going to have to come to you. And you really don't want that. So let right. me manage my budget accordingly. 
so I can do it, you know, and I wasn't just budgeting for myself, but I was budgeting for Aman as well, because right. now I have an 18 year old with me that mm. wants to be entertained. So he's going to Q City. He's riding mm -hmm. four wheelers. You know, he wants right. to eat different food sometimes and you have to budget for that. Um, this is an elder from Sierra Leone that is into investing in gold. Mm. So wow. you know, he, he was an interesting brother to talk to. He's also part of Chief Fode's organization in Sierra Leone. Right. Yeah. So this is this is so good because, you know, when you can't I know one thing that you you've done over um, over time is uh, and we're supposed to be wrapping up, but we got to let people know how they can travel on a budget. If you can't travel outside of the country, you said that whenever your job would offer training within within the country, yeah. You would travel, not that you yeah. wanted to travel around the states, but this way you could learn to pack, you learn how to budget, you know, just traveling around the states where you yeah. kind of knew about things. And then with these timeshare offers, a lot of us will get those timeshare offers. This is where you go, you say no, and you take the trip. And you gave us a tip about that. Um, about yeah, what I do is, um, yeah, I call in advance. I call the timeshare companies in advance and I'll ask them, are they offering anything for this particular community? Like, let's say it's Atlantic City and I want to go to Atlantic City for the weekend. I call the timeshare in that place and um, I will find out. Uh, what they're offering for the time period that I'm going to be there. And they say, oh, okay, well, we could do $25 a night for a place that's $150 and mm -hmm. you can sleep six. And I'm like, well, I really don't need anything that big. What else do you have? You know? And then right. they'll say, well, we'll offer you this place for $10 a night if you're willing to do the orientation, right? So I go, I do the orientation. I tell them no through mm -hmm. all six people, because you know they try to get you. No. I say no, and then that last person says, listen, give us one more chance. We'll give you a free trip to Florida if you will agree to go to Florida, and of course. So I ended up with a free trip because it was my birthday weekend that I did it. I did it in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I got the free trip, and now I have a free trip for Florida. And so my plan is to meet up with my people from Alabama and Georgia and have them come and meet me in Florida before I leave for the continent. Wow. wow. See, yeah. that's the way that's the way to do it, you know, yeah. because of course we all love the dance, we all love the party, but we got a plan. Like XDMC says, I've crazy story. I met Stevie Wonder and Grace Jones at Studio 54 when hip hop was starting. They started letting folks like me in laugh out loud, yeah. even though I was underage. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta get in wherever you fit in, make it work, because it can be expensive when everything is cash is about cash only. But like you're saying, you can budget. You can save, you can go to these places and get a free trip. You say no to all of the timeshare offers or right, say no. Right, they right, give right. you a trip and all you have to do is worry about your money uh, right. when you're right. there. Uh, and even, just, just one more thing. Um, even with your company, you may not want to go. But my thing is, if they say they go into Minneapolis or some state that I've never been to, especially mm -hmm. if shopping is involved, like the Mall right. of America, I'm like, I'll go. I'll go, you know, and I go because they're paying for my food. They're paying for my transportation. All I have to do is be present and maybe do a presentation when I come back. Absolutely. Right. It's a no brainer. You take advantage. And as soon as I can get away from these people, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm at the shops. I'm going to historical places, you know, so that's how you do it. Yeah, Black Butterfly says this is like couponing <laughs> for travel. So yeah. true. And uh, Powell wanted to know was the elder that in, that uh, invests in gold in Sierra Leone. What's his name? Sydney. I think so. Okay. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And then the weather in the UK, Philip Waldo was asking, you know, they say it's rainy. Was it rainy and dreary? Yeah, it, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I, um, it depends on when you go because it's so beautiful because they have some really beautiful gardens. Mm -hmm. So everything is blooming, but I was there from January to May. So that is oh. like their rainy type season. And you know, that cold in the UK is something special. When I tell you, <laughs> chill you to the bone because it's humid. So yes. it chills you to the bone. And when you blow your nose, because you, you know, your nose is always running, you right. get black soot. Like it's a dirty place. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There was like, I remember I had black soot on the end of my sleeves on my collars, mm. so you breathing you it in. You didn't yeah. have that. I know I know you said when you were in the Gambia, Sierra Leone, and Ghana, yeah. you had dust on your feet that you could tap off outside the door, 
but you didn't have black soot coming out your uh, no. 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 Yeah. No. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's interesting because as you know, there's so many dirt roads and things like that in the Gambia, but of course you get it on your feet because you're walking in the sand, right. but, you, but you don't end up with it like in your lungs and in your nose and in your hair. It's interesting. I don't know why. I guess if it was windy, you would experience that, but it's just on the ground and you're fine and you'll find it in your home. Like people say, you always bring um, Africa into your house because you carry in the sand, and that's why people always take off their shoes when you enter in people's homes, mm -hmm. right? And you, know, you try to clean off your feet before you go inside, right? You know, um, Jahari is agreeing. It is cold and horrible, rain, dreary, yeah. over overcast weather, and you know, it's just, it's just, it's just something. I was talking about my mother used to date him, Andre Colas. We need to give you the info on him. Hey. hey. And uh put no on my business in the street. Now that's right. So and <laughs> Kelly Watt says, yes, that's why we're friends. Have suitcase will travel. Because like you were saying with Giselle, uh, she was saying that um, oh, not this part. Giselle was saying earlier that she's done that timeshare thing with her husband in Orlando until her husband said no more. He tied those. You know, he'd just rather pay or not go, I guess. And, you know, as far as her son, she's tried to get him out of it early a few times. And that plan didn't work because they had a playroom for the children. And then he decided to go out. So basically the timeshare, they try to find ways to get you to say yes. And you other know, thing, like, kids. don't count out cruises, right? Cruises are a good way. You know, we talked about that. A cruise yeah. is a good way to experience different countries. You'll experience it in a different way, but at least you can do it on a budget because all of your food and everything will be included. Like, I remember it was Amon's birthday. I told you all about that. And he all he wanted for his birthday was to be slimed. And I'm like, where am I going to get him slimed? Who does that? You know, I was like, oh, I can buy some slime at the store. I got you. Like, I'm always willing to give someone a slap or a slime if they need it. You know, right, right. But he, he didn't want that. He wanted to. So I said, well, we can't go to Nickelodeon Park. So then I was like, hold up. Nickelodeon has a cruise ship. Yeah. So when he was 10 years old, I saved. I bought the, sh the tickets for the Nickelodeon cruise ship. He I didn't even see my son. He was hanging out with people. They were taking him to dinner. He was going to plays and circus. And I'm just wandering the boat looking for a friend. You know, I was just right. alone. And wow. so I worked out the whole time we were on the boat. I worked out with the crew and went to a couple of shows. And we only met up for like breakfast and dinner. Any other time he was, he was gone with his friends. So right. that's a good way to have a vacation and not have your children pestering you because you don't have to worry about them. You know, they're taken care of. Right. They do have those clubs um, that keep the yep. kids up where they have adults. It's not like the child was just running free. So exactly. Absolutely. And then. We also forgot to mention, you know, when you go to do excursions, when you're on the trip, right, you will meet people. And sometimes people are alone. Like I was signing up for some stuff to go out on excursion because I went on one cruise by myself. It was a house music cruise. What I didn't know was that the folks were from Chicago. So it was a different type of house music. Right. But it was very cool. So I met this brother that was an editor of a newspaper, a black newspaper in Chicago, and he was working out his bucket list. And so mm -hmm. I was signing up for stuff. He was on signing up for stuff. And he said, listen, um, you know, I'm trying to knock out a bucket list here. Would you like to go with me and I'll pay your way? And I said, sure. Long as you know there's no romantic involvement, we're cool. Let's do it. You know, so you got and free excursions. Free excursions. I went to, you know, we went, he went to kiss dolphins. And mm -hmm. I would I had been to Duns River Falls in Jamaica. So we climbed Duns River Fall together. You know, we hung out, we had a good time. When we got back, I was like, thank you. Good night. You know, right. and yeah. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool. And you just have to be open to meeting people and having different experiences. And that's just always been my thing. When people feel I'm knowledgeable or I know something, they want to offer something in exchange for that. And I'm cool with that. Like, that's how we get to learn about each other and experience different things. Right. That's the reason why we've got to follow you at all of your social media spaces. You know, Honeycomb 368, she says, yay, two of my favorite YouTube folks collaborating. And of course, we've got everybody agreeing with um, 
everything, all of your travels. Like, you know, XDMC, his wife travels for free. He asked her, Karen, how have you been able to travel and eat for free all of these years? He said, I'm married to you. Uh, <laughs> so, Kyle, I got a question. Did Mississippi he said, say to your mom, he said, oh, ma'am, you are so beautiful. And then, no, whoopty bomb, whoopty bomb. <laughs> well, well, just so you know, Corey, Jahari asked, wait, like, wait, Power, you got all the tea on the L there. Power's like, oh, yes. You know, we've had so much fun because, like you said, you're willing to give a slap, a slime. Philip Waldo Jr. says, not a slap. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know how sometimes people, you know how you get people and they all hysterical about something and you don't even really know what they're hysterical about. <laughs> and you just kind of look at them and you're like, I remember saying it to my mom once. She was flipping out about my brother, something he did. And I just looked at her and I was like, mom. And she's like, yeah, I said, do you need me to slap you? And she just uh, bust out laughing. She was right, like, what? Right. I said, listen, I got you. I'm that type of child. Like, I will always be there for you. You need yep. me to slap you so you can get it together? I'm that <laughs> friend. I am that person. I ain't going to say I'm going to do all of that. You know, some of the people I've had some similar experiences. Philip Bolo Jr. did Dunn's River. Corey and I did Dunn's mm-hmm. River. And Corey could not see. And he was out there doing Dunn's River. And um, the last cruise I was on, I lost the karate contest is what XDMC is saying. He was robbed. He said he karaoke. Karaoke. Because oh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I know that that brother yeah, is. It, that, there's that Waldo education. No, don't mind me, y'all. I, yeah. Most days I can read. Okay. <laughs> What? Uh-uh. No, I, no, we know that XDMC thinks he can do karate, so I know why you thought that. But I said, no, he's trying to tell us he can sing, and we all know that is not the case. Oh, oh, sound like a karaoke band coming on blind guys right after their life. And he said they didn't, they didn't appreciate his voice like Lynn Blake. Honeycomb 368 took, took her kids on a cruise uh, to Cozumel Best Vacation Ever. Girl, this is so wonderful. Everybody is loving you. Um, and Giselle just wants to make sure you didn't get a slap back for saying that because that's what I was thinking, Giselle. I would have lost my friends. I wouldn't even say no, it. No, she couldn't. She just had to. She just stopped. Me. My mother and I were best friends, as you know, right? I told you that. I took her parasailing. I took her to Jamaica the first time that she had ever traveled outside the country. Mm-hmm. I took my mom to get her first tattoo. And I took her to her first strip club on Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right, well, I guess the slap is love. XDMC said if that's the case, his wife loves him. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going We are going to get out of here because, um, uh-oh, we're getting the tea. I'm going to have to call. Wait, we're going to have to have a chat. Uh, terrible. He was in Ghana before. Okay. That's what Powell said because, you know, Powell was in Ghana for some years. And so I guess Sydney was in Ghana. Uh-oh, oh, girl. Yeah, the, 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 the booty bomb, booty bomb was not a good booty bomb. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I, I got you, power karaoke battle. Uh, so look, we know that you had a cool mama. We know that you have had so, so many ways of making money. We appreciate you sharing those. And God, and make sure, yes, make sure you follow her on Poshmark. We did share her Poshmark store. So you know how to find her. Just go to Souls. By AM when you go Soul Springs. Soul Springs. Look, y'all know what I'm trying to say, but in case you don't know what I'm trying to say, all you got to do is look at the screen. Uh, Posh Ambassador or Soul Springs by AM. You're a Posh Ambassador because of all the sales you've done. Girl, this has just been amazing. You are a phenomenal woman for sure. So we are going to say goodbye to you for now so that we can get to our final. Um, our so final was, segment, Donnie so, goes in talking about all the karate moves he watched as a kid. He think he could do karate. You know what? Uh, <laughs> Let me get out of here. Y'all leave XDS. XDS, <laughs> he'll jump to these YouTube channels and just whip everybody. And then y'all like, now you believe. Now you believe. I don't know. Well, Kelly Watt says this was great. She had a great time hearing about her sister and our host. Her wonderful, wonderful. Jahari agrees. It was fun, family. Thank you. Got to get ready for the plantation life. <laughs> so this was delightful. One love. So we're going to go ahead and put you backstage, hang out for a while till the broadcast is over, and we'll talk to you then. Uh, yes. Andrea, Andrea Africa. <laughs> so t- it's time for today's Plan Base Tree. All right, guys. By Chef Laquita Marie. Getting you to eat more fruits and vegetables. So enjoy. Super Bowl sweets. Get these oranges all sliced up. I cut out the center a little bit by cutting a V. Caracara or blood oranges are super sweet. 
And each orange will give you about 10 slices. We're gonna get our pineapple sliced up. So we'll just cut the bottom off here. Cut the top off. Go right around the outside. Pineapples and oranges have calcium and manganese, great for healthy bones. Pineapples have bromelain, reduces nasal swelling, helps digestive disorders. Remove the tough pineapple center. Eating fresh fruit before a meal helps with digestion. Add the brownie bites. They have oats, dates, cacao powder. Oats have anthramide, an antioxidant that's almost solely found in oats. This antioxidant reduces your blood pressure by increasing the production of nitrous oxide. Trophy winning trail mix. So we make a quick trail mix with pumpkin seeds, walnuts, cashews, and chocolate chip. For nut allergies, substitute sunflower, hemp, and sesame seeds. Add dried cranberries or other dried fruits. Craisins are not crazy raisins, they're dried cranberries. <laughs> All right, guys. Everybody. Now, our kids did think that craisins were crazy raisins. That's why we had to put that in the video. Guys, get your fruits and vegetables in any way that you can. This has been such a great episode. Powell says, come on with that food. The pineapples and oranges that we had are very good and very sweet here, but like Angie Africa and other people have traveled to the continent, says nothing beats the taste of the pineapples and fruit there on the continent of Africa. So we're and in other places like Jamaica and the Caribbean. So we're anxious to get our feet there and then to taste some of those wonderful foods. But we want to thank you for joining us on this episode of a blind guy his wife their life channel that's supported by member support from viewers like you wait a minute you know what we never said that anja africa's youtube channel is anja africa anja africa guys a-n-j-a-f-a-f-r-e-e-k-a -A -E -E -A. yeah so guys uh we do apologize for that um omission but make sure you go ahead over there and we are going to see you guys soon uh tomorrow with another episode of my guy his wife their life we have a new york times illustrator that's going to be joining us tomorrow and to say goodbye we're going to say dum, 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 dum. No, we deuces are, no, we are, not. We are <laughs> going to say deuces <laughs>